In this episode, we will look at the Ur and Isin dynasties of Lower Mesopotamia, which occurred from 2112 BC to 1924 BC. As we have discussed in episode 6, the central government collapsed in Egypt at about the same time the Akkadian dynasty of Mesopotamia collapsed. This was during the first intermediate period of Egyptian history. After the death of Naram Sin and the collapse of the Akkadian kingdom, the land of Sumer saw relative peace for about 50 years. After that, a foreign invader named Gouda from the Iranian plateau in the north dominated a few of the cities of Sumer for a 20-year span. For the next 50 years, the city-states were decentralized, each one ruling itself more or less. Until 2141, a foreign conqueror known as Gouda had some kind of agreement with the city of Lagash and helped conquer its neighbors of Ur, Uma, and Uruk. This domination of Gouda lasted for 20 years over the region, which was now a mixture of Sumerians and Akkadians. At this time there was a large influx of migrants from the upper Euphrates region into the land of Sumer. It may have been due to a drought or a war, it's hard to say, they were called Amaru by the Sumerians, just as they were in the previous migrations. There is some speculation as to where these newer migrants originated. They also spoke Akkadian language, but unlike the earlier migrants who absorbed the Sumerian culture, there were other kinds of migrants coming along the trade routes. There were Bedouin traders and their families creating tent cities in the proximity of the cities of Mesopotamia. Trade had been disrupted by the fall of Naram Sin in 2218. The kingdom of Akkad had provided steady lucrative trade for over 100 years since it was founded by Sargon the Great. Now things have come to a halt. There was not enough wealth to buy the amounts of goods that had normally been brought from Africa and Egypt and further through trade routes. During this period of uncertainty, there were migrants coming from the upper Euphrates and from the desert. Gouda was an invader from the north. These were all due to trade. When the trade created by Akkad stopped, people followed the trade to find out why it stopped and they became stuck at Akkad because they couldn't sell the goods they had transported and now had to transport them home or stay and try to sell them. Even Gouda likely was making money from the Akkadian trade into the Iranian plateau during the Akkadian rule and now set up shop in Sumer in Lagash. We spoke about the city of Lagash in episode 4 this is where the oldest known law was created by Uru Kagina, the king of Lagash. His city, Lagash, was destroyed by Lugal Zagaski, the last king of Uruk, whom Sargon killed when he founded the Akkadian kingdom. And now, 100 years later, there was an arrangement made between the city of Lagash and Gouda to bring trade into Sumer and dominate the region. This also would have affected the trade from Aleppo and Arabia, causing people to migrate along the paths. Gouda would dominate trade in Sumer for 20 years, until the king of Uruk, Utu Hegel, a Sumerian, rebelled against the Gudians in 2112, pushing them out of his city. After Utu Hegel ruled in Uruk for 10 years, as well as ruling over a few other cities, including Ur. Ur-Namu, governor over the city of Ur, overthrew the king of Uruk and took the title king of Ur. He also claimed the title king of Sumer and Akkad. He is the first king of the Ur dynasty. He began his campaign by defeating Namhani, the king of Lagash, who had traded with the Gudians. He then pushed the Gudians out of Sumer. It was this governor, Ur-Namu, 
who built the famous great ziggurat at Ur, as well as large ziggurats in Uruk, Eridu, and Nippur. These ziggurats were dedicated as Tower to the Gods, or Tower to Heaven, which makes some speculate it may link him to the story of Nimrod in the Bible, who built the Tower to Heaven. Ur-Namu is also known for the most ancient collection of law codes ever found. After Ur-Namu fell in battle in 2095, his son Shulgi spent 20 years establishing his rule in Sumer. He built infrastructure such as canals. He brought about civil order through centers of learning. He organized better trade in the region. He then met Elam in war to protect his trade and expanded his kingdom by capturing the city of Susa from the Elamites, along with its surrounding cities. He also took the Akkadian title, King of the Four Directions, and deified himself just as Naram Sin had done. The son of Shulgi, Aram Sin, continued the administration of his father bringing the Ur dynasty to the zenith of Sumerian power, with a vast amount of trade being linked through Susa and onto the Silk Road, as well as being linked to the upper Euphrates routes, which linked with the Mediterranean Sea. There were also Bedouin tribes trading between Ur and the incense route. A large amount of trade records have been discovered from this time period. There was a tax system with revenues and expenses, public works, more ziggurats, all of the industries thrived, industries such as leather, cloth, grains, oil, fish, pottery, and many other things. The common people lived in general poverty and debt during this period. Shusin was the brother of Aramsin. He succeeded him in 2038. He built a great temple to himself and dedicated it to the divine Shu Sin at the city of Eshnuna. Shu Sin's reign was plagued by massive immigration from what he called warring clans of barbarians from the desert who were settling in the land and probably profiting in Shu Sin's trade. Many Amru were also migrating down from the upper Mesopotamia during this period. This was the first sign of the Ur dynasty getting weaker as Shu Sin oversaw its unraveling. There were many migrants coming who caused constant disruption and trouble for Shu Sin. Ibi Sin, the son of Shu Sin and the last ruler of the Ur dynasty, first lost the important city of Susa who revolted, followed by Eshnuna who also revolted after a dispute concerning Shu Sin's deity and his temple at Eshnuna. Ishbi Ira, an Akkadian governor of the city of Isin, then revolted and took three of the most important cities with him, Nippur, Uruk, and Eridu. This move by the governor of Isin begins the Isin dynasty, who picked up the trade when the Ur dynasty fell. With the Ur dynasty weakening, the Elamites attacked and burned Ur to the ground in 2004. Ibi Sin, the last ruler of the Ur dynasty, was taken prisoner to Elam, along with Nana, the crescent moon of Ur. The fall of Ur left the land of Sumer divided. Ishbi Ira, king of Isin, along with his three cities, was at war with Larsa, one of the largest cities in Sumer. During this time of civil war in the land of Sumer, the city of Assur at the upper Tigris River won their independence from the Sumerian rule. This would lead to the Assyrian Empire in later times. The Assyrians will come into play very soon, but at this time they are going through short periods of independence or paying tribute to various kingdoms controlling Sumerian trade. Eshnuna was the hub between Assur, Susa, and Ur during the time of the Ur dynasty. Assur became independent when Eshnuna revolted from the Ur dynasty. After the fall of Ur, 
the first ruler of Assur was Puzer Asher I, followed by a succession of kings who were Assyrian blood but bore Akkadian names, including Sargon and Naram Sin. Mesopotamia became loosely divided between north and south. The north was divided between Assur and Eshnuna, while the south was divided between Isin and Larsa, and these were splitting into several smaller kingdoms. Ishbi Ira, the Akkadian of Isin, was the one who had earlier revolted and took three of the most important cities, Nippur, Uruk, and Eridu, from the Ur dynasty. When the city of Ur was destroyed by the Elamites, Ishbi Ira took Ur back from the Elamites by uniting the whole land of Sumer in a coalition against the foreigners. This begins the Isin dynasty. Ishbi Ira's successor, Shu Elishu, recovered the crescent moon of Nana, the moon god of Ur, which had been taken by the Elamites. He also took the title King of Ur, and he established Isin as his capital. His successor, Idin Dagan, in 1974 BC, expanded the kingdom to include the whole lower valley from the Persian Gulf up to Babel. Ishmid Dagan, the next ruler, continued unsuccessfully to push further up the valley in 1953 BC. He attacked the city of Kish, a small city-state, but was repelled. Ishmidagan became known as the king who set justice in the land. Lipi Ishtar, the last king of the Isin dynasty, produced a law code containing 43 articles, an epilogue, and a prologue. Lipi Ishtar was killed by Gunganam, the king of Larsa, in 1924. The next 30 years was marked by a civil war between Isin and Larsa. Gunganam went on to control about half of the cities of Sumer, naming himself King of Sumer and Akkad. The wars between Isin and Larsa continued until a new and more powerful enemy ruled over both of them. Tune in to the next episode, episode 10, to learn of Old Babylon and the Hittite Kingdom.